Welcome everyone. Welcome to Mega Life 21 Live. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 and Progressive Discussions. And I am here streaming live on Facebook from one of the groups I created in 2012, the International Brotherhood of Polygons. And um, <clears throat> it happens to be, yes, it's the heat wave continues, 40 states are being hit. And uh, it is mid-July, July, no, it's actually, it might not be so mid, it might be the end of July. Um, well, it's July 21st, 2019, it is Sunday, Sunday evening, and uh, we are streaming live from uh, Facebook. And it will be on YouTube eventually. Seven lucky bells for the show. A little Thelma bell. In honor of the late great Art Carney, Ed Norton. Okay, now. <coughs> Even though, knock on wood, my powerful air conditioner is working splendidly, um, I am drinking some Kieran Ichiban premium beer. It says, first press 100% malt. All right, got that? I got it at Mitsua, Japanese market today. I usually go there on a Sunday. Even though I have, you know, I have a problem understanding the behavior of the people there, but, uh, it's, a, it's an excellent product. It's very refreshing. It tastes a lot like Modelo Especial, to be honest with you. Uh, I know the beer snobs want to know all sorts of information. Uh, uh, well, it's 1.6 fluid ounces. Not... 5% alcohol by volume. I'm not looking for the date, like some of those uh, nitpicky, uh, anal retentive beer snobs. I'm not wor worried about the date. Okay. Because I don't care. If I like the beer and it's ice cold, and I'm thirsty, I will guzzle it. I don't care if it's uh, past date or whatever. This is an actual uh, Japanese god. I believe it is called Kirin, you know, historically in Japan. All right. <laughs> I'm not saying the brewery is ancient, but, you know, the image definitely is. It's a nice uh, golden color. Uh, it, it, it definitely looks and tastes like it would 
make an excellent summer beer, which is supposed to be the theme for the next Fandango Friday from um, uh, uh, Ronald J. Tirio's Louisiana Fermented Beverage Review Organization because he just he he does he does not just do craft beer. A clean, crisp, um, light but not weak um, taste. Very re refreshing. Excellent for consistent everyday drinking during the warm weather months. Very moderate on the, um, yeah, very mild, not strongly bitter, very moderate on the bitterness and the malt flavor. And um, like I said, it, it reminds me a great deal of uh, Modelo Special, um, Genesee Cream Ale. Uh, you know, just a nice, clean, crisp, uh, uh, consistent drinkability. All right, and this is the weather for something like this. One of one of the finest lighter beers that I've ever had, to be honest with you. And I think very highly of those other two I mentioned. Um, Genesee Cream Ale and Modelo, Modelo Special. See if I can read this. Kieran. Should have brought my magnifying glass with me. Well, it's, it's the gold writing here. Kieran Ichiban uses only the most flavorful. Well, what else are they going to say, right? Portion of the finest ingredient. What does that mean? Portion of the finest ingredient uses the, the most flavorful. Well, it does say first press 100% more. So what does that mean? There, there are no hops in here? Maybe Ronald J. Terrio knows a bit more about this product and he can uh, interpret what 100% malt first press means. Well, this is disappointing. This is disappointing. Uh, the, the fine Japanese company sold out to corporate America. Shame on you. Brewed under soup under strict supervision yeah don't don't count on it under strict supervision by anheuser bush i hate their guts in los angeles california and williamsburg virginia oh gee anheuser bush the self-proclaimed proclaimed king of beers actually the macro beer that spends the most money on advertisement seems to have its octopus tentacles everywhere, doesn't it? Hmm. Well, I just want to say that I'm pretty pissed off that I received a letter to um, to show up for jury duty here in Bergen County, New Jersey, at the Bergen County Courthouse in Hackensack, New Jersey. For um, to to be chosen or not to be chosen for jury duty, I received the uh, the letter. I I went online to fill out the application, and I'm supposed to receive a questionnaire. Well, guess what? I did not receive the questionnaire. So it looks like I am going to have to show up this Wednesday at 8:15 a.m. And I am not a morning person. I despise mornings. I really do. 
it's not something I really feel like uh, getting up for. You know what I mean? I mean, you you only get forty dollars. I don't know if it's forty dollars a day or forty dollars for the whole thing. My sister says she had she was a juror for for a grand jury, and she only received I think she said five dollars per day. And then if you don't show up for this despicable drop in the bucket chicken feed. They threaten to post a, a, a warrant for your arrest. I mean, people, I noticed one thing. People that work for the government, whether it be a social services welfare caseworker, or in this case, people involved in the judicial system, anybody working for the government, they always love to to threaten you at the end. It, 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 there's always some form of threat or intimidation. What incentive would any American have to even serve on a jury for such microscopic pay? Seriously. Would those poor politicians that made these laws, mostly local politicians, which are the most corrupt, on the take, corrupt politicians, uh, formerly greedy, blood-sucking lawyers, would they want do anything for forty dollars? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. But anyway, <clears throat> I want to mention something um, my, my buddy Jeff Zambello showed me that um, there is going to be a new alternative um, circular training um, event uh, uh, it is part of a, a large series of events I believe the first one is going to take place in Manassas Virginia and it is going to incorporate both uh, kettlebell swinging, competitive kettlebell swinging, with competitive mace swinging, or the gada, the gada. Um, it is done with judges to make sure you use perfect form. And there are rules to make it a fair competition. And... It's fascinating to me because <clears throat> it incorporates both both the kettlebell and the, and the mace. You know, the mace in the, in the United States is much more popular than swinging clubs like Persian meals. But I think Persian meals require much more ability. I mean, because you have to use both halves of your brain to be able to coordinate and control two clubs with two separate hands and do it simultaneously uh, or alternately. But yet you still have to control two of these uh, sizable Persian meals or for those people that are new to the game. Uh, you can call them heavy Indian clubs. In India, they call them juries, which, uh, you know, Richard Army McGuire said the word jury means club, you know, and just like the, the gada is mace in Indian, and uh, the mace is just mace in, in English. But all clubs, no matter, no matter what culture they come from, no matter what, what name is used, they are all derived from the weapons mace, the, way, the mace used by warriors. Okay, so whether it be a um, bowling pin shape uh, British Indian club or 
Sim Di Kiho Club or uh, Spalding Club or uh, Gus Hill Shape Club or a Mug Doll, uh, which kind of looks like a looks like a wooden suppository. It's very straight. Really, no pizzazz or charisma involved in the design of these clubs. And also, like the Northern Europeans sim seem to like these uh, straight wooden suppository shaped clubs, or I, I, like I call them fat wine bottles, you know, like American wood turners, and just like Northern Europe. And, um, uh, Many wood turners in India, they, they, they make these fat wine bottles or pegs. They're straight. They're, they're, there's really, there's not a lot of torque. It's not like a teardrop Indian club or a Spalding style Indian club, which incidentally, the great Izzy Barish, look for his video on YouTube, where Izzy Barish tested all of the different shapes of Indian clubs. He tested them all. And he has authentic uh, antique collection of all the Indian clubs. He tested them all. And he said that the uh, American spoiling shape, which is like a Victorian teardrop, except that has a flat bottom where you can stand it up upright. And um, he said that had the smoothest, best swing of all. Well, naturally, it has the most torque because most of the weight predominantly is at the bottom. It's like a baby mace. But do you think these other wood turners in the West would learn from science and think, oh, gee, you know, maybe we should start making uh, replicas of the antique Victorian Spalding Indian Club to increase torque and maybe we can make heavier ones with longer handles. That's right, the longer the handle, the greater the torque. The greater the torque, the more challenging uh, the swing is and, and, and most likely the smoother the swing. So Izzy Barish proved it. He proved what shape Indian club swings the best? But do you think these wood turners in the West uh, would learn from this? No. Um, and unfortunately, it's been a while and they haven't learned yet. So, but this series of events, um, like the ones, the ones that Jeff Sambello um as mentioned um they will begin in manassa virginia and uh they will also uh come up to new england uh i think in, in new hampshire so that there there will be two events i think in new england but the very first of this series of events will be in uh, Manassa, Virginia. So I salute the first of a very promising uh, series of events in alternative circular training with judges and record books where the winners will go in the book and receive their medal or trophy and will have earned the right to be in first place, you know, or second place or third, whatever. And they will be timed and their form will be strictly scrutinized. Nobody will cheat in this event. And like I said before, it will incorporate both uh, the kettlebell swing and the mace. Now, hopefully the mace that they use, I know it's going to be a steel mace, Hopefully, it will be the steel mace with a long, hollow, light handle for maximum torque, where most of the weight will be at one end in the ball. 
okay, in the cannibal. Excuse me. This is an excellent beer. As far as refreshing, lighter, I'm not, I wouldn't call this a light beer. I don't know if it's considered a lager or what. Maybe Ronald J. Tirio can, can tell me if it's a lager or a Pilsner or whatever it is, but this has to be one of the very finest of the light summer beers that can be uh, consumed daily and consistently in large amounts. And, and that beer, uh, excuse me, is Kieran, Kieran, a premium beer, Kieran Ichiban, first press, 100% malt. Okay. Unfortunately, it is brewed by the scumbags of Anheuser-Busch, corporate America, skooma, skooma, like my Italian grandfather used to say, skooma. Uh, okay. But I give it, considering the class that I just put it in, uh, I give it a 90. Uh, which uh, which would be an A minus. It's a good score. Now the imported German wheat beers, Weiss beers, I have to say, <laughs> surpass this in score. But an A minus is not bad. So I'll give the Kieran Ichiban premium beer, first press, 100% malt, a 90% and A minus. I'm not going to get all fancy like the beer snobs and say, what date is on that bottle? I want the date so I can write it down. Meanwhile, once they write it down, it gets lost in like in, in piles of notebooks. There's no reason for it. Or someone will say, oh, it has a crackery breadiness about it. It's chewy. How the fucking liquid be chewy? Oh, oh, it has a crackery breadiness. Oh, yeah, you mean it has a malt? It has a light or medium or significant malt flavoring to it. I think that's what they might mean, or or a yeasty uh, uh, aroma or flavor. Instead, they say crackery breadiness. You know? Unbelievable. I mean, we need more luck. Considering none of these jabronis are coming on the show. All right. There are, there are many annoyances that take place with people, but because of the heat wave, I left the house late to go to the Japanese market. I did not go on the walkway uh, over here in Edgewater, New Jersey, uh, where I, this is where I live now. I'm from Lodi, Bergen County, New Jersey, but I'm still in Bergen County. But it really pisses me off that I have to go for this jury duty. It really does. A little halftime show with the juice heart.
Oh, man. Oh, the weather. You can put a little bit of a damper on um, on the juice hop. I'm looking for um, another friend of mine, a great man. Uh, uh, rock and roll singer extraordinaire, as well as DJ extraordinaire. And uh, he uh, he was married to the uh, famous uh, Electra of uh, East Coast, I'm sorry, ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling, Electra. He was married to her. I'm talking about the one and only Mr. Kelly Stevens. I'm trying to find, find Kelly Stevens. Hmm. Can't find him. Maybe he's not even online. <coughs> oh, well. Oh, my God. Anyway. I have a special guest. Yep, he's still in the area. It is the one and only, uh, uh, one of the stars of the old show, The Addams Family, and that is Thing. You remember Thing? There he is. Thing is still in the area. He's, he's a lot older now. He, he used to have a, uh, a thinner fingers and a more delicate hand, and he was also very quiet when he was on The Addams Family, which means he probably did not get a uh, Screen Actors Guild card and, uh, you know, became a part of SAG because he, he did not have a speaking role. So I hope financially he did well. Uh, but now he's older. Uh, thing, um, did, when you were on the Adams family, did you get compensated uh, adequately after that? Well, what is your feelings on that? Yikes. Motherfucker. Well, what is your opinion of the producers of the Adams family? Ass liquor. Really? Shit my brains. Fucking idiot. What about the people who are making a ton of money by doing all these uh all Screw you. alternative uh, fitness seminars? And not teaching the students anything, just taking hundreds of dollars, even sometimes a thousand dollars. What is your opinion? Fuck base. I'm talking about people. Southern California and Southern Connecticut. What do you think of them? Badass bastard. You're talking about these the people in tight spandex showing a camel toe and Ass crack with swamp ass? Sit on this! Ass bandit! Hey, dickhead! Are they a bunch of crooks? Hey, lot ass! Yeah, they also get an allowance, I think, from the gym owners. Uh, but they sucker groupies. Not you, asshole! They, they, they sucker groupies into picking them up at the airport and taking them back to the airport and taking them to the venue, you know, and they pocket the allowance. I agree. I couldn't agree with you more thing. Uh, you're a fine, you're a fine, I can't say a fine young man. You're a fine old geezer. Go fuck yourself. So, uh, yeah, so. Oh yeah, they take people's money. You're right, and they they don't teach anything. What about the person who says clear out the gym when everybody was drinking refreshing ice cold spring water after 90 degrees with high humidity, killing themselves trying to do a, trying to do a hundred repetitions with a with a light mace and listening to jokes and limericks. What do you got? What do you have to say about the the person who? did such a seminar and said, clear out the gym when everybody was conversing. Shit my brains. Fucking idiot. Screw you. That's Fuck a, face. That 
was horrible, wasn't it? When that person did that. Oh, and he made he made poor Jeff Sambello wait until like past nine thirty PM before he had dinner. He was waiting, Jeff Sambello was waiting all night. And he finally Get on this. You think I you think I was gonna go? And have I was gonna starve all day and have dinner after nine thirty PM? <laughs> no way. <clears throat> Especially not a piece of crap. Hey, a piece of crap place like the um, BJ Steakhouse. Ugh. A franchise? No, I'm not gonna have dinner at a franchise. Fuck you, asshole. Uh, uh, wait twenty minutes for a table like poor Jeff Zambello did, making him starve all. All day. Go fuck yourself. Now let me tell you, Jeff eats good. Jeff eats good. Jeff eats good. You, you, could, you could take that right to the bank. Yeah, I agree. He does. He eats good. Jeff. Do you think these people? Do you think these people? Belong? Do you think these people belong in the? Do you think these? Do you think these people belong in uh, Jack's joke shop? Jack's Jack's joke shop. Oh, what? what do you think? What do you think about that Trojan horse, Zay Ricardo? Oh, Zay Ricardo was sent as a spy. Remember that? Yes, well, you're a fan of the group thing. Remember Zay Ricardo? Shit, my he was a secret spy for <laughs> for oh, for that man Fuck, for that Dutchman Fuck, uh, in in Southern Cal in in Southern California. He was a spy. Get on this. Trojan horse. He was desperately trying to get. He was desperately trying to get me. He already said that. He was trying to. He was trying to get me. To uh, change the whole format of the International Brotherhood of Polyvans, and. Uh, he was really frantically trying to get me to do that. And I said, no way. We're, we're warriors for truth, justice, you know, and, 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 and for the little guy. We defend the little guy. So, you know, and we're not going to change our format. We're not for sale. But, you know, uh, for certain obvious reasons. Um, you know, Jeff Sambello took, uh, he went on hiatus from doing shows with me because uh, he received a specific phone call. But uh, I won't stop because anybody who sabotages my live stream shows, this is war. And this, this militant feminist from Southern Cunt, connect to cunt, connect to cunt. Uh, started it. Uh, started it by not accepting constructive criticism, by teaching the wrong things, by overcharging people for seminars. Uh, to be honest with you, her and her mentor from Southern California are not qualified to charge several hundred dollars a person to do physical fitness seminars. They're not certified in anything, really. They don't have, they don't have any, any credentials whatsoever. You know, to be charging people a lot of money to do seminars. I mean, one of the the one from Southern California is, is by trade a uh, a forklift operator in a warehouse. Uh, you know, he's he's got a good union job. You know, look for the union label. Remember that commercial? Da, 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 da. He's got a good union job, but he doesn't want any of his clients to know that he works in a warehouse. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's a respect 
It's a respectable occupation. You're not a drug dealer. I mean, come on. But he, he has this elitist mentality and he wants an elitist image because of all these hoity-toity, stuck-up bastards, people with money from Southern California that he trains and people throughout the world. He wants only a certain upscale clientele only. And he doesn't want anybody lower than that. He does not want Joe Sixpack. He wants only upscale people because he's highfalutin. And, uh, you know, he, he, he rents an apartment in, uh, that's part of a uh, exclusive country club. And he does it for image. You know, it, it, forget about, you know, whatever happened to the humility of people involved in martial arts or people involved in the Zirkine or the Akara or Kushti wrestling in India, whatever happened to, to the humility and the humbleness of the martial arts world, the Shaolin monks, they didn't care about prestige and about image. They didn't care at all about that. They cared only about doing the right thing. You know, to put it in simple layman's terms, doing the right thing in life. You know, there, there's the right way and the wrong way. There, there's not, you know, uh, there are no, you know, little white lies and gigantic lies or, or tiny sins and, and humongous sins. A lie is a lie, a sin is a sin. And, uh, you know, like Spock said on the Wrath of Khan, uh, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. How true that is. But the elitists don't think that way. Uh, I mean, myself, personally, uh, when I retired, I had... I was a certified personal trainer, uh, a nutritional consultant. I had collectively uh, one, two, three, four, five, I, about five, five certificates. Wait a minute. Yeah, I had five uh, health and fitness and nutritional certificates altogether. Five. You know, um, I didn't go from being a good humor man in an ice cream truck uh, to uh, being a personal trainer, you know, I, and then plus I worked for professional wrestling, it, you know, I did security and I was a bad guy manager, a heel manager for a little bit, uh, I did security with, the, with my close buddy, the great Brian Slade, who is now a bail bondsman and bounty hunter, and he also owns a Canada Dry uh, ginger ale route and he does security at nightclubs with little Jimmy Pesto uh, two very close friends of mine I, I give a shout out to little Jimmy Pesto Brian Slate and uh, my good friend uh, ECW man uh, heavy metal rock and roll singer who had a great group who was part of a fantastic group and DJ extraordinaire, Mr. Kelly Stevens, he's on my friends list. These are great guys, you know. <clears throat> and they will, and they can give character references at any time for me. But there are many phonies out there, there are many jealous people that I have known that, that will stab you in the back. They'll, they'll kiss you on the cheek and hug you when they see you. Hey, brother, 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 like in the pro wrestling industry, as soon as you walk away, they'll stab you right in the back. And that's how it is. I'm not saying it doesn't occur in offices, because it does. I'm not saying it does not occur in the fitness industry, because it certainly does. Uh, I'll tell you right now, professional wrestling promoters and gymnasium owners in my area are all sleazy, low-life dishonest scumbags they will have a fundraiser and they'll say well we're doing a fundraising 
uh, pro wrestling event for the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Who really knows how much money they're really donating to that fundraiser? They could be pocketing most of it. They stiff people for money. The, these goombas in my area, these guidos that own gyms in my area, they don't pay the personal trainers what they deserve. Personal trainers are professional people. They are trained professionals. It is a career. They are supposed to be compensated very well for their services. Okay, at least $50 an hour and up. And up, more up than down. Instead, they, they stiff them with much less money. They're scumbags, these gym, gymnasium owners. I don't care. They're all, they, they all seem to be goombas, you know, guidos. They stiff people for money. Um, so I'm not just, I don't just attack alternative circular training people um, uh, who do seminars for $1,000 a head. I also go after the gymnasium owners that screw the personal trainers that are so worthy of much more and as professionals. And um, yeah, I, you know, I, and they're just, oh, same thing with like a lot of uh, bar owners, uh, like go go bars and everything. You know, they, they attract the lowest common denominators. Seriously, I mean, uh, in, as far as personnel goes, uh, they don't practice good customer service. Let's put it that way. You know, they they reserve the right to refuse to serve anyone without any any justifi justifiable reason. Uh, that's that that's a re that's a like a, that's a Republican thing when an employer can let you go. That's a, that's a nice way of saying, beat it, uh, buddy, you know, you're fired. Uh, uh, they can let you go, and they don't have to give a valid, justifiable reason why they're doing that. They call that, um, it's funny how the right wing use, uses nice words, nice terms for everything. They call that right to work states. Right to work. You have a right to work. We have a right to fire you for no reason. Mm, interesting. Like the Clean Air Act or, you know, with pollution. Yo, corporations, fossil fuel industry can pollute the atmosphere and contribute to climate change. But we're calling it the Clean Air Act. Uh, right to life. Yeah, you have a right to life if you're still in the, in the woman's womb. If you're in the womb, you have a right to life. Once you're born, the hypocrites don't give a shit about the baby once it's born. Now, of course, you know, no, they don't even care about the rich baby because the rich baby don't count because it was born with a silver spoon in its mouth. But if you're like a baby that's middle class or poor, oh, they definitely don't give a shit about you. They only care if you're a fertilized egg, uh, a feed, an embryo that, that breeds like a fish, a fetus. They care a hell of a lot about you. They'll fight like a banshee for you. But once you're born, you you have no value. Uh, it has, it's nothing is different. Like the Bible says, nothing is new under the sun. You know, with the, in the old days during uh, the imperialism, the monarchies, it was the same thing. The people on top uh, hoarded all of the prosperity and wealth. And there was really very little middle class, if any, and you know, it's all mostly poor people. And uh, you know, it, 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 it was, hey, it was, it could be, it could be worse, but actually it's almost that bad because the man as president now, uh, the uh, Trump and Stein, Trump and Z, um, the Trump and Stein monster is the modern day uh, Emperor Nero and Caligula. And uh, so, Thing, what do you feel about all these sleazebag promoters and employers that stiff people for money? What do you feel about uh, uh, jury duty, paying chicken feed, and 
threatening to arrest you. Uh, what do you feel about all of these scumbags in general? Incompetent people doing seminars for a thousand dollars a head, as well as the sycophants that don't have the balls to come on my live stream shows. What is your honest opinion about them all? Cocksucker! Wow. Go fuck yourself! A little harsh. Reese. Motherfucker! Ass licker! Oh my goodness. Shit for grades! Fucking idiot! Screw you! Fuck base! When do you leave the region? When do you go back to Southern California? Fuck up! Fat ass bastard! When Sit you, on this! Do you live in Hollywood? Ass Hollywood? Malibu? Or do you live in uh, San Diego? That's nice. Hey, dickhead! Hey, hot ass! Fuck you, asshole! You don't want to give. Cocksucker! You don't want to give your lo. Oh, fuck yourself. You don't want to give your location. Motherfucker. I guess you don't want to give your location. Too bad. Oh well. Anyway, all right. Oh, you gotta go. You're going back to your dressing room, and your limo's gonna pick you up. All right. Goodbye, thing. All right. Thing is off. Where is everybody? I just want to say congratulations to the fine organization that is going to be doing these seminars combining kettlebell swinging and the mace swinging. And you can find out all the details about this fine organization uh, by simply going uh, to uh, our group joining our group, the International Brotherhood of Polybons on Facebook. That is Polybons, capital P-A-H-L-A-V-A-N-S, the International Brotherhood of Polybons. That is our old school, ancient warrior, physical fitness group on Facebook. Complete, total, drug-free, safe, training and exercise, pure integrity, and we honor the martial arts. We honor the martial arts because these are people with integrity. And they promote old school, drug-free, safe training. One of nature's greatest fountains of youth. I dedicate tonight's show to my good buddy, drug-free, hardcore, old-fashioned fitness trainer and professional competitor, Mr. Jeff Zambello, originally from Boston, Massachusetts, now residing in the maritime province of New Brunswick, Canada. And he will be coming down to... Uh, my area, I believe, Lodi, New Jersey, to New Breed Fitness, uh, run by the great Daniel Ramsey, along with his wife. I think her, I think her name is Lily, I'm not sure. Uh, in, on Garibaldi Avenue in Lodi, New Jersey, my hometown. 
And uh, he will have, I believe, a Kung Fu uh, master, a Kung Fu expert doing a seminar. I believe his name is Matt Fury. Matt Fury. And I would highly advise you if you're located anywhere near the New York metropolitan area or if you're willing to make the trip, definitely sign up for this two-day course with Daniel Ramsey and Matt Fury. You, I guarantee you, you will leave with a serious deep education in mind and body a complete education, not just superficial physical fitness, but they will go deep and you will get your money's worth. Okay, at New Breed Fitness, he's on Facebook. He has a website, New Breed Fitness, in Garibaldi Avenue, Lodi, New Jersey. Mr. Daniel Ramsay, S-A-Y. Check it out. Join the seminar. Meet the great Jeff Zambello. And myself. Well, I think I'll be I'll be doing video for Daniel Ramsey. I don't think <clears throat> Matt Fury from Lucky maybe. I don't think Matt Fury's gonna let let me in with my camera, but you never know. Uh but uh and then Jeff Zambella will be competing uh this year later on in uh at uh Yuri's gym in southern Connecticut as well as in New Hampshire for that organization that does the mace and the kettlebell. And Jeff Ciambello will be winning awards because he's training like he has never trained before, intensely. And check out Jeff Ciambello's Facebook profile because everything he does, all of his drug-free, hardcore training and diet, optimum, organic, high fiber, high nutrition, uh, almost vegetarian diet. Everything he does is on his Facebook profile. Jeff Zambello. Zambello. Okay. So, and definitely click like to New Breed Fitness, Garibaldi Avenue, Lodi, New Jersey. Daniel Ramsey. And uh, this guy, Matt Fury, I, I posted a video of him uh, on the International Brotherhood of Polyvon. Okay, so I'm going to finish off. Um, well, I can't finish off with the bosun's whistle because I forgot to bring it. It's on the it's on the other side of the of my studio office, but I might be able to do something with the African with the African Jembe drum, mahogany and goatskin. 